After successfully crossing the Sicarus with his five legions, Caesar orders a forced march in pursuit of the Pompeians. Trying to catch up with their column before they reach the Iberus riverboat bridge and escape to safety, Afranius started his march during the previous night, a few hours before Caesar could cross the ford. However, he was slowly losing his advantage, being slowed down by the baggage and the constant assaults of the Caesarian cavalry on the column. In the rear, Caesar was advancing at high speed, having his infantry pushing their limits and marching as fast as they could. For the most part of the day, the two armies raced southwards, with the Caesareans gradually reducing the distance and approaching their enemies. During the afternoon, Afranius sees his enemy closing in fast to his position and realizes that it's impossible to outmarch Caesar and reach the Iberus while being continuously harassed by his cavalry. He orders his troops to take position on a high ground adjacent to the road and places legions in defense, waiting for his enemy. Caesar approaches and deploys his troops in a three-line formation close by, facing the Pompeians. He made no further offensive moves, however. His men, fatigued after a full-day forced march, had no ability to offer a full-scale battle, but only to pin his enemy and stop his advance to the river. Afranius, with his own soldiers tired, was also reluctant to launch an assault and attempts to continue his march southwards. Caesar mirrors his enemy and continues the pursuit at a distance, constantly checking his advance. His cavalry also resumes their attacks on the column, slowing it down. Pompeians understood they cannot reach the Iberus in one continuous march under these conditions. With the evening already setting in, they choose to encamp on a hill next to the road. Caesar follows and also sets camp on a nearby hill, keeping his enemy in check. Cavalry parties are sent to patrol and watch every movement of the Pompeians. During the night, some of Ephranius' men who had ventured far from their camp to carry water are captured by Caesar's patrols. They report that Ephranius prepares his army to silently decamp and plans a stealthy nighttime advance to the Iberus. Caesar immediately alerts his soldiers and takes his legions out of the camp. The Pompeians notice the sudden activity in the enemy camp and abandon their plan, realizing their element of surprise was lost. The night passes by with no further events. In the morning, both parties send scouts to check the surrounding area. A few kilometers further south on the way to the river, the ground elevated to impassable levels with only a few places that allowed access. On their direct route, one of those places was located about 10 kilometers away of their position. This pass became crucial in the race for the river, as once Afranius could reach it, he could easily block it with relatively few troops and stop Caesar's advance, while the rest of the army could reach the boat bridge in safety. Afranius and Petraeus hold a war council in their camp to establish their course of action, based on the new information. The majority were in favor of re-attempting a quiet decamp in the night and quickly marched to the pass, given the short distance they had to cover. However, arguments were brought that with Caesar's cavalry constantly patrolling in the night, the enemy could once again observe their maneuver, and this could lead to a chaotic, full-blown nighttime engagement. As everyone agreed that such a battle is to be avoided, especially during the night, they eventually settled to wait for the next day and resume their advance early in the morning. Based on the fact that a marching column might sustain a few casualties on the way, but the army as a whole could reach the pass.
The following day, as soon as it was light, before they began preparations for their march, Afrenus' soldiers could see from their palisade Caesar raising his camp and having his legions on the march on an undefined route in a direction opposite the Iberus River. Seeing no baggages carried by the enemy, the Pompeians assumed Caesar had abandoned the pursuit, forced by the lack of supplies, and was now retreating back to Ilerda. Suddenly, they could see Caesar's columns slowly turning right and changing their direction, heading on a circular route back towards the Iberus River. When the first elements of the column arrived on the line with their own camp, they realized the maneuver and everybody rushed to arms in panic, preparing for march. The Pompeians quickly abandoned their camp, leaving only a few cohorts to guard the baggage, and started their advance southwards directly to Iberus. With his fake retreat and the element of surprise, Caesar reduced the slight advance that the Pompeians had and now both armies started their race to the pass from almost equal positions. However, the Caesareans still had a more difficult route to follow, through an uneven ground with hills and valleys that reduced their advance speed. Caesar's cavalry was once again sent to harass the Pompeians, to press and hold back their advance for as much as possible with their attacks. Under heavy marching conditions, both armies were now advancing as fast as they could toward the pass. The Caesareans were slowed down by the difficult terrain, while the Pompeians advanced on an easier route, but had to constantly fight off Caesar's cavalry assaults. The marching efforts of his infantry, combined with the cavalry successfully harassing the Pompeian advance, allowed Caesar to reach the pass first. The legions were placed in battle formation on a plane, blocking off the pass. Afranius, aware that he lost the chance to directly reach the Iberus, was now placed in a difficult situation. With Caesar's full infantry force holding the pass in front of him and his cavalry on the rear cutting off the access to his camp, Afranius had few choices at hand. In a defensive move, he orders his troops to the nearest hill as being surrounded by Caesar's troops was a possibility he wanted to avoid. From the hill, one last attempt was made to reach the boat bridge on an alternative route. Few Iberic auxiliary cohorts were sent to capture some high ground adjacent to the pass, hoping that once those are seized, he could follow in full force with the rest of his army and cross the mountains. The Caesarian cavalry patrolling around the hill observed the maneuver and quickly moved in. The Spanish cohorts were intercepted on their way and destroyed, leaving Afranius with no hope of reaching the river. At this point, the Pompeians were completely trapped. The small hill did not allow them to form a proper battle line, and the troops were gathered on the top. They also lacked any access to a water source or the possibility to reach their camp for supplies. According to his commentaries, Caesar's men were now pressing him to allow a full-scale assault. Considering the enemy was trapped, demoralized and crowded on the small hill, unable to form a coherent defensive line. However, he decided that given the overall situation, he could force his enemy to a complete surrender by maneuvers only, and with the campaign without the need of a battle that would expose his own troops to potential heavy losses. With his enemy's access to Iberus cut off, Caesar was probably confident that given his superior marching speed and advantage in cavalry, he can outmaneuver Afranius from now on, until the Pompeians will eventually lose hope and surrender. Therefore, against the advice of his men, Caesar refused to order an assault, a decision that caused discontent in his own ranks. He was also aware that keeping the Pompeians blocked on the hill for too long, with no access to food and water, will eventually cause them to break out in full force, resulting in a chaotic battle. In order to avoid this course of events, 
Caesar took the surprising decision to move his troops for just enough to allow Afrania safe access back to his camp. With outposts placed along the mountain passes to keep the access blocked, he took his legions back on the march and closely followed the Pompeians at a distance. As soon as Afranius reached his camp with his troops, Caesar raised his own camp nearby, patiently waiting for his enemy's next move. The following day, Afranius and Petraeus hold a new war council in their camp. With all the routes to Iberus blocked by Caesar's outposts, they had to choose between marching back to Ilerda or to attempt an escape eastwards towards the coast, to the town of Taraco. During the council, they were informed that water carriers were attacked by Caesar's cavalry on their way to the camp. The two generals decided to secure the access to the water source and send troops of both cavalry and infantry to form outposts along the way. To further protect the line, they order a rampart to be built all the way to the water source and both generals leave their camp to assist with the works. In their absence, the Pompeian soldiers who remained back in the camp reached out and started talking with the Caesarian soldiers, expressing their thanks for being spared in the day before. Troops from both sides got together in the space between the camps. During the friendly conversations, the Pompeians asked about how they would be treated in the event they would switch sides and join Caesar's army. One of these proposals was made by Afranius' own son, who asked Caesar's safety for him and his father through an envoy. At this point, the atmosphere was heading to a potential ceasefire, as some of the Pompeian soldiers and also Spanish auxiliary leaders were already taking advantage of the situation and moved to Caesar's camp pledging allegiance to him. Word on these events reached the two Pompeian generals, Afranius gets back to camp, but takes no action, waiting to see how the situation evolves. Petranius, however, gathers some nearby guards and Iberic horsemen and rushes back, attacking all the Caesarian soldiers exposed between the camps. Caesar describes of his soldiers, armed only with their swords and having no shields at hand, wrapped their cloaks around their left hand to defend themselves from the enemy blows, fighting their way back to the camp. After the attack, Petraeus calls all his men and delivers a speech, reminding of their duty of allegiance to Pompey, and asks them to renew their oath. The brutal intervention of Petraeus stopped the course of events that was slowly leading to an end of hostilities, and the former state of engagement between the two sides was restored. A few days passed by, with the Pompeians fortified in their camp. Their access to water was limited, and the few supplies from the baggage were running out. According to the training of the Roman army of the time, the legionnaires used to carry on their packs reserve rations for 15 to 30 days ahead. In this case, Caesar mentions that the Pompeian soldiers carried the food rations for 22 days, since they left Ilerda. However, this was not the case for the Iberian auxiliaries, who were not used to carrying such burdens in their campaigns, and had neither food reserves nor the possibility to forage. As a result, the auxiliaries deserted to Caesar's camp in large numbers on a daily basis. Eventually, the two Pompeian generals decided they need to start moving back towards Ilerda as the city was still in their control and there were some food reserves available there. The army decamped and started its march back to the city. Caesar immediately sent ahead his cavalry to the usual harassment of the enemy advance and soon followed with his legions. 
Afranius could not rely on its own cavalry to protect his march from the Caesarian attacks, as the Iberic horsemen were demoralized after the previous encounters. In fact, the auxiliary cavalry, instead of patrolling around the column to defend, was placed in the middle, being defended by the infantry. Under the constant pressure, the Pompeians were forced to often halt and repel the cavalry attacks with the legions and the light infantry. With the Caesarian cavalry pushed back, they could resume the march for a while until they were again under attack and the situation repeated. At this pace, the Pompeians could only advance about six kilometers before they decided to halt on a nearby hill and try to find a way to trick their enemies. A trench was built facing Caesar's direction, giving the impression they planned to build a camp, but no baggage were unloaded and the soldiers were kept ready to resume their march. Caesar stopped near the hill and camped, convinced that his enemy was doing the same, and sent his cavalry to forage duties around the area. At this point, the Pompeians decide to take advantage and quickly resume their march, hoping to gain enough time before their enemies could reform and start to follow. Caesar observes the maneuver and recalls his cavalry, ordering to resume their harassment as fast as possible. Soon they were launching furious charges in the rear of Afranius' column. Pompeian soldiers took heavy losses, and many fled under the cavalry attacks, while Caesar was closing in fast with all of his legions. Afranius stops his advance, fearing that his entire army might collapse and flee. Caesar recalls his troops and again cancels the assaults, having his enemy forced to a halt in what he describes as an unfavorable position for a camp and far from any water source. He kept his soldiers on alert, however, and ready to start their march, allowing no camp to be raised. His army needed to keep maximum mobility if the Pompeians would once again attempt to secretly sally out and escape. During the night, the Pompeians start digging a series of trenches, aware of their precarious position, and set up a camp on a better location. Caesar also raised a camp and patiently waited for his enemy movements. The earthworks continued for the rest of the day, extending their area of fortifications, and their camp was pushed even further to a more secure position. At this point, Afranius' intentions are not exactly clear. Caesar only describes in his commentaries the prolonged efforts of the Pompeians to move their camp a few times while entrenching themselves between the works. It is not clear if Afranius intended to fortify his way towards the city, aware that marching in the open was not an option after the last events, or if he simply tried to fortify on a large area to create a secure position. Whichever the reasons were, the Pompeians moved to a new entrenched position which offered protection against potential Caesarian attacks. However, their advance moved them even further from the water source and became impossible for small parties to provide water, having the Caesarians' cavalry threatening their route. Afranius's men eventually had to go in mass, arranged in battle formation towards the water area as it seemed the only secure way. The downside was that no one was sent to forage. In his camp, Caesar waited for the enemy morale to crumble under the constant difficulties, as they were deprived of either water or food. In order to accelerate their surrender, he orders the digging of long trenches around Afranius' camps, aiming to encircle their position with a rampart and have the Pompeians completely surrounded. For the next two days, his soldiers were engaged in the earthworks, slowly enclosing the enemy fortifications.
The following day, as the works advanced, Afranius realized that something has to be done, as the situation would lead to surrender of his men once the encirclement is complete. He orders his legions to step out of their fortification in a two-line battle formation, with the auxiliaries kept in reserve, in an attempt to force his enemy to gather his troops and stop the working duties. Caesar reacted as expected and withdrew all his men from the trench works. His legions were deployed in the usual three-line formation, with the cavalry on the flanks, facing the Pompeians. Again, no attack order was given. According to his commentaries, the choice to wait in defense was based on the belief that he could win the campaign without a battle. Another reason is that Caesar believed that an assault would have been tactically ineffective anyway, as the Pompeian lines were so close to their camp that even if routed, they could retreat to safety without heavy losses. The armies remained in this stance for the entire day, Afranius having met his objective to temporarily delay Caesar's works, but only for the time being. No reasons are given in the commentaries of why Afranius did not launch an assault. One possible explanation is that by drawing out his army outside the fortifications and deploying on even ground, Caesar will be tempted to order a charge. After days of being low on supply, his soldiers were probably not in the best shape for a full assault, and he likely intended to save the situation with a final battle, where he can be in defense. However, with no signs of an engagement from Caesar's side, in the evening, Afranius eventually withdrew his legions back into his fortifications. The following day, the Caesareans resumed their work. Afranius, close to being completely surrounded, unable to force a battle or to continue his march to the city, decided to try a last maneuver. Scouts were sent towards the river in search of a suitable place to cross. With the Sicarus being closer to his position, once such a fort would be found, he would follow with the rest of the army and attempt to cross. Caesar anticipated the move and sent his cavalry to the river, along with part of his infantry. The troops took positions along on the river at close distance to each other, blocking out the eastern bank. This was the final blow for Afranius. Running out of options, with his soldiers in desperate need of supplies, he finally asked Caesar to meet and negotiate a surrender. Caesar agreed to discuss the terms under the condition that all discussions take place in the presence of all soldiers and not in a private meeting as Afranius requested. A conference was held in full view of both armies with all the troops present. Caesar presented his offer. Afranius and Petraeus were free to go as long as they agreed to disband their legions and abandon Spain there would be no repercussions to either of them in return for peace. The soldiers were free to go to their homes or join Caesar's army if they wished to. Caesar continued the approach he followed throughout the entire Italic campaign towards his defeated Pompeian enemies, offering freedom or the option to join his ranks, attempting to turn former enemies into future friends. The unexpected, generous conditions were accepted by both commanders and their troops, and the Alerda campaign was formally over. In a swift, maneuvering campaign that lasted less than four months, Caesar annihilated the loyal forces of Pompeii in Spain, with virtually no casualties at all or any major battle fought. 